Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Hey! Welcome to our show that's for you and about you. Those of you who work so hard for your money and you want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom, cash flow, and prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life that you love, doing what you love with those that you love. But most importantly, as a Rippler, you create that ripple effect to the lives of others because as you're blessed financially, you can help create a greater impact in this world. Guys, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your ripple effect. Thank you for allowing me to create a ripple effect through you and making that part of my ripple effect. Um, by the way, just, just want to acknowledge here, if you, if you haven't done so, go to our YouTube page, the Money Ripples with Chris Miles page. Subscribe there today. Hey, so guys, I'm, I'm left the last few weeks. You can see that this office is slowly clearing out. We're about ready to move in a few weeks. So uh, we're packing up and eventually we're gonna be recording episodes with, I don't know, maybe we'll have a blank office wall at some point. But uh, we hope someday have, someday soon and next month have some more stable place. You'll have a new background, new location here. But uh, anyways, guys, uh, I, I, I just can't express enough appreciation for you guys right now though. Um, the truth is that you guys are amazing. I think you're some of the best podcast audiences out there right now like you guys obviously if you're here and you're listening to this show you want something more with your life you want something better you want to be better you want to create something more you want to be prosperous you want to be free and that cannot happen unless you do something different and so i honor you guys and and applaud you for challenging the status quo not buying into that mainstream crap and that's exactly what i want to talk about today because I want to ask you, like, do you really consider yourself to be an independent thinker? You know, would you say that you actually turn your brain on and, and question everything? Now, I know there's many of you that would say yes. And then there's others I would say you might want to check on that a little bit more. The, here's, the, here's the litmus test. Do you actually believe everything you're taught, right? Especially if it supports your own opinion. You know, do you believe that? Um, do you do you question even the things that actually f go in favor of of the very things you want, right? Um, yeah, the biggest thing is as an independent thinker is that you got to question everything. You got to even question me, even if you agree with me. You still have to question it and think for yourself. And I'm telling you, despite having so much access to Google and media and everything else, more than ever, I will tell you there are more brain off people, more people that are more really. I, I don't know if we would call them dependent or codependent thinkers, right? Uh, people are codependent upon each other to do the thinking for them. And they'll say like, yeah, I'm woke. I'm learned, right? Like I know what's going on. No, you're not. You know, for the most part, you're not a, a, an actual, you're not actually thinking for yourself. Most of the time you're just buying into whatever narrative is out there, right? And especially the more prevailing the narrative, the more you got to question it. Because let's be honest. I always like to know that, you know, like Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues, right? Um, I always like to look to see where real results happen. This is why I questioned being a financial advisor after four years was what were the results of what I was teaching? Not just in my own life and in the lives of my clients, but what about the other advisors around me? So guys, you know, I'll tell you, like, I, I remember being a financial advisor. They were doing the thinking for me, right? They were telling me everything I should think. Did you know that even though I talk about whole life now, did you know that as a financial advisor, I was telling people whole life was the worst life insurance you could possibly get? <laughs> I was teaching the opposite of what I'm teaching now. Um, I was telling them it was horrible. I said, yeah, your rate of return on whole life, one or 2%. That's it. Now, where did I get those, get those statistics? From other guys in my office, where they get those statistics? No clue, right? I just taught whatever they were teaching me. And so I was like, hey, these guys are the experts. I'm just going to regurgitate whatever they tell me, right? Um, and that was that. That was it. And, uh, and so it, uh, for three years, I didn't question anything, really. I just absorbed. I learned. And, and I learned a lot, right? I really learned about what it means to be that mainstream traditional financial advisor, right? What does it mean to save for the long haul? You know, taking high risk, create high returns. I bought into that. You know, I bought into, you got to pay off your debt and become debt free. You know, you got to save and accumulate money to live on less than the interest and all that kind of stuff, right? And my goal is to become financially independent by the time I was 40. Funny enough is that uh, after about three years or so, I remember there were certain people that came in my life that started questioning it, that were more independent thinkers. Now I'll tell you, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be an independent thinker because already if you're doing that kind of stuff, 
you're probably already thinking differently, right? Because entrepreneurs think differently because they realize they want control of their own life, their freedom, they want control of their destiny. And they have to question the status quo of go to college, get good grades and get a good job. They tend to go away from that. Although some entrepreneurs still do it. Like I meet some dentists, for example, that are saying, nope, you should still get good grades, go to school, go to college, get a good job. And you know, voila, I have a good dental practice, right? But the truth is that you know, most of us as entrepreneurs realize that yeah, some of that stuff is so-so advice. There's some truth to it, but it's not all true, right? It's not a good blanket statement to give. Um, you know, same thing with people that are homeschoolers. I know like people at homeschool like my wife does. Now, homeschoolers love to think outside of the box and think differently. I, I, question, I, I challenge you all to think outside the box. And obviously, if you're listening to the show, you have to. If you're trying to think inside the box and try to make it work between these two worlds, maybe you're a financial advisor trying to figure out how to still be a financial advisor and make it work here in this, this philosophy I'm talking about too, you're going to have a hard time. I know I tried it from end of 2005 to March of 2006. I spent those two or three months just trying to figure out if I could still be a financial advisor and teach differently than what I was taught. Because I realized when I stopped going to the trainings of the financial advisor, the funny thing is my financial advising business grew. It went up, right? Um, yeah, I, I stopped listening to all the training. I started teaching more based on principles. I started teaching more things like you hear on this show. I started to kind of question everything, you know? And here's the thing. I had a few people that came in my life. I had one guy who was a business owner, a very successful business owner that questioned things, uh, told me, Chris, I can make $20,000 from 10,000 in my business in a couple months by reinvesting in my business. Why would I put $10,000 with you to maybe make 12% a year if I'm lucky? Um, I had another person who was actually a stock trader and said, Chris, mutual funds are a joke. You know, mutual funds are like the highest risk with lowest reward you can possibly get because yeah, you're not trading it. You could take a little bit more risk by trading, but at least you can pick and choose and, and be more, fluid, you know, pivot more easily with market swings where mutual funds cannot. And so he got me to question mutual funds. You know, um, I had a friend who questioned me and you guys have heard this story. If you've listened this long enough or heard me on other interviews, I had a friend who was going into real estate investing and, and told me the same thing. He's like, how many financial advisors do you know? They're financially free, not off the commissions, but actually doing these mutual funds, doing these investments, you know, all these things that these guys are telling you is the key to financial freedom and independence. And I, when I realized that none of those other financial advisors, including myself, were financially free, I had a choice in that moment. I can either push it out and ignore it, or I could face it and say, no, no, like I, this is true. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to stay in integrity or am I going to follow my pocketbook? Am I going to follow the money, so to speak, right? Which is what the whole financial advising industry is about, you know, those big financial companies are trying to sell you on their crap to buy their crap, right? Buy their mutual funds, buy their annuities, you know, buy their insurances, all that kind of stuff. It's always about a product, but they fail to really address the true nature, which creates real financial independence, which is one being an independent thinker to create financial independence. You have to be an independent thinker to create that. And then two, you got, you got to do things outside, of their norm. You could try to do it with their products, but I'm going to tell you from my own experience, you might be dead before it works. You, you, you're like a Dalmatian chasing a fire truck, just trying to get there, but you never quite get there. So guys, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to think differently. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to challenge me. Um, I'll tell you, like, uh, it was interesting. You know, you guys might've heard me do that uh, podcast several weeks back about spenders and savers, right? You remember I mentioned that there's actually more savers than spenders. Despite what Dave Ramsey and, and everybody will lead you to believe, there's more savers than spenders. Well, it's funny. One of my friends who I usually agree with a lot on, on Facebook said, said, you know, I think the world is all but a bunch of spenders, people blowing money, you know? And I was like, uh, and he kind of asked like, hey, what do you think? And I said, false. You know, I said, false. Most people are savers. You know, the normal world is not just blowing their money and living, he's saying live on less than paycheck to paycheck. I said false. Uh, more people than not are not living paycheck to paycheck. Now, they may not be making a lot more than their paychecks. I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying that they're overspending to the point where they're actually sinking every month. That's the minority of people. The majority of people are at least paycheck to paycheck, if not saving a little bit, even if it's in their 401ks and then their paycheck to paycheck, right? 
uh, people are for the most part. And I was like, and he's like, well, what statistics do you have? I was like, well, listen to the show, listen to my podcast. I did a podcast on it and even referenced some articles that were a part of that. Uh, I think I mentioned it was like, I can't remember, it was 52 or 54% of people were that had 401k plans were saving in them. And that includes a lot of us that could save in a 401k plan, but choose not to because we know we can make better money elsewhere. You know, or, you know, or maybe some of those people are working on paying off their debts because they know they can make more cash flow doing that than paying into the 401ks, whatever it might be, right? There's, the thing is, if, if already the people that, are, that have 401ks, more than half of them are eligible doing it, then more than half are actually savers. But guys, I didn't believe that. I believe just like him. I thought most of the world were spenders. I thought most people were in that, that worse than paycheck to paycheck. But I was wrong, right? Uh, there's been many times I've been wrong on this show over the years, over the last seven years. I mean, I'm sure if you listen to all 500 and some odd episodes, you would find that I probably guessed something wrong, whether it be about markets or whatever it might be. Hey, I talked about Y2K15. I was wrong. I, there was no Y2K15. You know, uh, 2016 ended up what should have been a down year, in my opinion, didn't end up being a down year. And I wasn't the only one that thought that, but it, the market just kept going up, right? And especially after Trump got elected, it just skyrocketed after that. I was wrong. You know, guys, you have to admit that the only way you can ever be right is admit when you're wrong too, because that's the only way I can be right is if I'm wrong, admit when I'm wrong. That's what it is about having integrity. That's what it means to be an independent thinker saying, is this true? Is, even if it was true before, is it still true? You got you to gotta question everything because if you keep spouting off stuff that maybe you've said for years, is it possible that maybe that was never true in the first place or maybe it was true at that time, but now it's no longer true, right? So again, guys, my, my whole point is this, is that for you to do something different, you got to break those chains. You got to break the chains of the mainstream media, break the chains of every financial advisor. I know, and I've talked to a lot of you. Some of you struggle so much with trying to change this perspective that you should be just packing money away in your 401ks, paying off your debt, just like good boys and good little girls. And the truth is, is that you may not be, it, that may not be the best thing for you. But again, it requires you to break those chains, to break free of everything you've been conditioned to believe was true. Because I'll ask you this question, if everything you thought was true actually wasn't, when would you want to know about it? Would you say, ah, just, don't ever tell me the truth. I don't want to know the truth. It's, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is expensive, guys. Ignorance costs you money. Ignorance costs you happiness, joy, and freedom. What will you do with that independence? Will you think independently so you can have financial independence? You can't have one or the other. I'm telling you, even those that say they're financially independent, when they aren't independent thinkers, they find themselves right back into non-financial independence. They find on themselves not doing things right. This is why you've got to stay away from the hype of the media, stay away from the hype of even colleagues that might be going crazy and saying, yes, this is the thing. You should buy crypto. Yes. Yes, that's it. Stable coin, you know, whatever it might be, right? That's, you got to hear past the noise and think for yourself. And it requires a lot of times turning off things. It means turning off my voice, you know, saying, all right, I'm done with your episode, Chris. Now I got to think about this and ponder it. Great. Think about it. You know, look in, do it deeper. But I'll just tell you that success leaves clues. The one thing I look at most is what are the results of those actions? What does it create? I'm going to be doing another one because it's not just the actions you do, but it's also the mindset behind it. I'm starting with this here because you've got to first question everything you've been taught to create something different and new that other people aren't creating right now. You can't think the same way as everybody else and expect to get different results. It doesn't work that way, guys. So my challenge to you is to become an independent thinker. You want financial independence? You want to be financially independent by 2030? You need to start thinking independently now. If you're already doing that, great. Keep it up. Keep checking yourself. Keep questioning even your own beliefs because I can assure you from my own experience, I've been wrong way too many times to not to think that I'm always right. So anyways, guys, make it a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later. Visit us online at moneyripples.com.